A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's Tuesday, the 6th of February, 2024. My name is Rome Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Akkaji. It's good to be here knowing that you are there as well. And we welcome you to this very, very special edition of the program because every day is quite special. You wake up to a brand new day that you will never meet in your life time again and you have never met in your lifetime this opportunity to begin anew yeah, yeah. that's right anyways we're going to be looking at some top trending stories as well as some hot topics and what the national dailies are saying this morning on today's bulletin but first let's check out the quote of the day The art challenges the technology, and the technology inspires the art, and that is by John Lasseter. He's a film director, well, he was a producer, the former chief director of Pixar, and then he's a producer and an animator. So he says this morning that the art challenges the technology, and the technology inspires the art. What do you think about this? Yeah, well, first of all, when I heard, of, when I, I read it, I, I was a bit confused. <clears throat> then I remember uh, some of the things that technology has come up with and where it started. Mm -hmm. Some of these things started in movies, in animations, things that we thought were not even possible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the the artist m dreamed it, mm -hmm. and the scientist, you know, manifested it, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. So when the art uh, I'm sure that's that's what I I felt was the meaning of this. Mm -hmm. The art creates something, technology takes it up, mm. and because technology is able to take it up, it also inspires the artist to think even deeper. Even deeper, deeper. And, and better. right? I, I agree with you because most times when we talk about technology, um, the art challenges the technology. So because. For instance, this person is a you know film director, mm -hmm. so he worked with Pixar. If you know Pixar, they do animation. So mm -hmm. most of all of these um, cartoon-like movies are like that. Yeah. So and most times you need technology to be able to pull that off. Mm -hmm. So it is the from the artist's um, mind that all of this thing comes and yeah it challenges the technology to say you know what we need to do more because this we need to create this thing we need to make it work so we have to do it a lot of times we have to do it a lot of times so it challenges um, the technology but then when you see the technology starts to do other things you're like you know what we can even do more mm -hmm. for instance um there, there was this movie uh it's, it's keeping my head now Avatar, yes. Avatar yeah. is the name of the movie. And Avatar came like almost 15 years ago. It was way ahead of its time, mm -hmm. right? So most people saw that as, wow, this is a new technology, mm -hmm. right? And so it kind of like inspires the artist to say, you know what? Other, other film directors or other people would say, you know what? I can, do, I can do more with technology. That movie was really based off from a studio, it wasn't anywhere. You had like the whole CGI stuff. So that's, that's technology took, in took twelve years from from one mm -hmm. the Avatar one to the before they made the, the second the one. Second one about mm -hmm. twelve years. That's how it is. But again, um, people take time to do what they need to do. They want to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, they say, they say it took about seven years to build the stage for. Um, Lord of the Rings, mm. seven good years to build just a stage for that. The plants that needed to grow, grew, the, the, everything they needed to do, it took seven years for them to complete that. But like we said, some of these things started in novels mm -hmm. where someone just imagined it and wrote about it and today they're manifesting. Yeah. Even something as simple, this one is not connected to technology, or maybe it is. Mm. The Yahoo we're talking about is from Gulliver's Travel. Mm. We were reading about Yahoo, now we have a Yahoo forum mm. for a, a mail and all yeah. that. So there are a lot of things that the art imagines technology brings to life mm -hmm. and then the art still wants to imagine even more, even more. adding up to what they had already imagined yeah. so it's really a complementary thing it's vis-a-vis -vis. mm -hmm. it's a complementary mm -hmm. thing art inspires technology technology inspires art Challenge. that's how it is it challenges yeah. it yeah so whatever it is 
whatever we can imagine can come to fruition. Even the, the comics we're talking about, it started with one person's idea. Mm -hmm. He was writing them or drawing them in yeah. books and all that. Today, those things he was imagining are coming to life. People mm -hmm. flying. We have shoes now. We have body bags that we, uh, mm -hmm. not body bags, let's not be like sure. someone died. <laughs> but backpacks yeah. that you can wear and you're flying. Mm -hmm. Things that we didn't imagine in the, in the days that even we were growing up. Yeah. So the art will always bring something that will challenge technology and technology will be inspired by what the art gives to it. It's, it's right. complimentary. Yes, okay. I love that. All right, let's move over to our top trending stories this morning. And the first one says, gunmen abduct passengers of two Abuja-bound buses in Kogi State. Kidnappers have abducted passengers of two Abuja-bound buses in the Inele Ekete Ogugo New Road area of Kogi State East District. Um, the incident reportedly involved a GIG and ABC transport buses heading to Abuja from the eastern part of the country. The GIG bus left Umahia at, in Abia State at about 7.30 a.m. on Saturday on its way to Abuja, the nation's seat of power. In the wake of the abduction, he said GIG had contacted security services to track down the abductors. Meanwhile, Kogi State Police Command has confirmed the incident. The command spokesperson, William Haya, in a statement on Monday said the divisional police officer, DPO of the area, local vigilantes and hunters have been in the bush in an effort to rescue the victims. He said the incident involved a GIG bus with 12 passengers and a Sienna bus belonging to ABC Transport with two occupants. But the driver of the GIG motors was later rescued by security operatives, the spokesman added. According to him, Kogi State Commissioner of Police C.P. Betrand Onwaha has deployed an additional tactical squad consisting of a quick response unit, police mobile force, counter-terrorism unit, and conventional police personnel to the area to continue with the bush combing to ensure all victims are rescued on hot. The abduction is the latest in the kidnapping incidents that have continued to gain momentum in several parts of the country despite efforts by security agencies and assurances from government across different levels. In recent weeks, kidnappers abducted school children and their teachers in Ekiti State in the country's southwest region, but they were freed later. Two monarchs were also murdered in the state during the period. Last weekend, abductors took away 55 people in the northwestern state of Katsina. They were kidnapped while escorting a bride along Damari town in Sabuwa, local government area of the state. Um, well, this is quite sad. And yeah. week in, week out. Every is this day, a new norm? Every day. Because like, like experts say, uh, for one reported incident, there could be about five or yes. ten that are not reported or even more than that and you know what was given a mention there was the ekiti pupils that yeah. were abducted i saw those photographs yesterday or the day before yesterday and i couldn't help it tears came to my eyes how could children that young um witness the murder of their driver the school driver because maybe like a lot of us the men we we don't know the numbers of of the cough if I have two numbers, I just know one. I don't know the second one. Mm. So this driver didn't know the number of his wife and the principal of the school or so. And because of that, he was murdered. Just like that. And he was wasted in front of these kids. Do you know how traumatic that is? I can only imagine what, like, the, the nightmares they are going, like, like, every night they have to sleep and dream about that incident. They will grow up. They need These to children, be in a psychiatric, yes, or very close to a psychiatric. We need, like, they need psychiatric evaluation oh, at the, right now because these children that has scarred them for life. Even I, as an adult, can't watch that, can't go to that, that and be the same. Yes, unless and these I are need little therapy, kids. I need a lot of things, and these are kids. Less, than, some of them, I think, like Pills. less than ten. Yes, it's it. It's and they terrible. see this. Guess what? If we, if if they grow up to be you know, hard-hearted people, you would not really blame them because of the type of things that they've seen, so gruesome. So the people... It's ridiculous. Can we were, stop this? When the, once they were brought, uh, they said they, they had medical attention. But if they gave them medical attention, did they give them the psychological or psychiatric yeah. attention, the evaluation that they need? Because 
beyond the physical scar that they might have the one that is inside is what is going to live with them or they are going to live with all their lives and same goes to these people who have been kidnapped uh, on their way to abuja you can't afford flying hmm. the, then the road is not, not safe either it's not even how many percent of Nigerians can fly nowadays? And then the roads that you're supposed to travel. You're saying how many people can fly? Safe. How many people can even travel? Look at what happened in December. Like, you know, the government had slashed the prices. There were not a lot of people that could even the government afford said that. They okay. slashed the prices. <laughs> <laughs> the government said yes. they slashed the prices. Yes, exactly. But a lot of people could not, because I think they were estimating how many million people, mm -hmm. and they only got like a hundred or thousands. Except that's like, what they like even say. Five, that's the report. Five million, because normally in in a good year, people who leave Lagos alone are more than five million. And you're talking mm -hmm. about the whole federation. How many how many people that will need to travel from the north to the east? Yeah. How many people will need to leave Lagos or the west? My point. My point is, even people cannot afford that. Then you're talking about air travel. So now the few people that can even afford, you know, traveling from one place, one state to another, even on the road, you are not safe. So. People would just be like, you know what, I would rather just be where I am because that's, that's where I, I can assure my safety. I think government should take a lot of these small things, let me call them small now, into consideration and be very, very fast about what they need to do for Nigerians to come back to at least enjoying life. There are pockets of protests here and there. Today you hear these people are protesting. Today, tomorrow you hear one person that was campaigning for this government is apologizing. Mm. And there was one that even walked naked, praying by the seaside for, for the president to I'm, emerge. And he emerged a few days ago. He was apologizing I'm to really Nigerians. Nice. A lot of people are doing that. And it starts like that. I'm not praying for it to degenerate into something else. But whoever is listening, whoever is responsible should take this seriously whatever needs to be done for us to see that okay maybe in the next two three months it's going to be better should be done but for now we we almost can say a hundred percent that when you wake up tomorrow the prices of goods and everything will not be the same as yesterday it will go higher yeah. instead of coming down which is anyways we're talking about security here so <sighs> I don't even know what to say. I'm tired of this story. I'm Just tired. I'm tired of you know having to talk about this almost every time I'm on the show. Please. The lives and properties of Nigerians should be secured. That's just where I'm going to leave it. It should thing, be yeah. that, yeah. Anyways, let's move over to another story. Duty increase, spot FX rate adoption through market into panic. The adoption of the spot foreign exchange FX rate in computing duty on imported commodities have thrown importers and the entire business community into a panic mode. For the first time, the Nigerian Customs Service NCS raised the import duty exchange twice within 24 hours on Friday under the guise of obeying the Central Bank of Nigeria's CBN's directive. The unusual adjustment raised the going duties across commodity lines by 48.5% in less than two days. Recall that the NCS adjusted the rate from 951.94 Naira to the dollar to 1,356.8 Naira to the dollar on Friday. While the market was yet to fully digest the decision, it was raised further by 4%, over 4% on Saturday to the current 1,413.6 Naira to the dollar. In a swift response by the NCS, well, they said the service is simply adhering to the official market as directed by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Since President Bola Ahmed Tinubu came into office, the import duty determination rate has been increased by 235%. It stood at 422.3 Naira to the dollar as of May 29, 2023, when the administration was inaugurated. With the liberalization of the FX market, Naira saw a sharp depreciation last June, forcing NCS to also adjust the rate used for the duty assessment. Since then, the customs rate mimics the spot segment of the FX market, explaining it is not a decision that, has, that it has control over. The service has ignored calls for the adoption of the average rate as opposed to the spot rate. Those who have advocated average rate adoption have argued that the option would make more sense for the, predi for, for the predictability and stability of the prices. 
With sports rate adoption, the customs have left importers guessing what the next day's duty could be, a situation economists said could worsen the inflation, increase the <coughs> cost of living, and raise poverty index. The fresh increase has also triggered a negative response in the prices of goods, including staple food. At the weekend, The Guardian lent, um, one of our national newspapers learned that the prices of many imported items were hurriedly adjusted. A list of cosmetics items cited by our correspondent added that 18 to 25 percent across the prices. Some products that sold for 2,200 naira per unit were adjusted to 2,600 naira, while the dealer explained that he would pay more to clear his goods, and he had to make provision for the upward movement of the replacement costs. There are fears that the prices of rice, a staple food consumed by many Nigerian households, could see a further sharp rise in the coming days following the increase. As at last May, a bag of 50 kilogram of rice sold for about 38,000 um, naira was soared by close to 100% to 70,000 naira at the close of the year. Following the hike in prices of fuel and importation, traders said Nigeria should expect the essential item to hit 100,000 naira sooner than expected as the rising cost of import feeds into general prices. An average Nigerian faces tough times in the face of the rising cost of importation last year, as in the case of previous ones, the tough five top imports by value were motor spirits, gas oil, wheat, sugar, and used vehicles, whereas the Naira depreciation means the subsidy cover for the motor spirit will expand drastically and Nigerians will face the direct consequences of spending more on this item as well. Inflation. What can I say? How do you import things when you know <laughs> that um, by the time you arrive at the, the ports, uh, maybe the, the, the Naira to the dollar has increased by 100% mm. when your plan was for you to pay a certain amount. Uh, so what this means is that uh, whatever the, the Naira to the dollar is at the point where those uh, goods have reached the, the ports, that's what you're going to, to pay. So if it is supposed to be 50,000 Naira maybe to clear your, 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 your goods and you've planned for that, you get to the docks and that they're telling you it's a 500,000 Naira that you're going to do. So how do you, do you make the adjustments? How mm. do you plan for yourself? You cannot even plan. I repeat this. It is not... It is not how much money we have in our foreign, uh, foreign reserves that people are concerned about. What may cause a re revolution will not be because we have no money in our foreign reserve or we have too much money in our foreign <laughs> reserve. It's because that. we not have eaten. no food <laughs> on, our table. on our table. How do you sell a, a bag of rice for 100000 And this is not even a joke because in the next two months, that can happen. happen. Now, rice in one year, 70000 people are buying it. 65000 70000 depends on the market you're buying it from. And then that is within, within, within how many months, not even just one year. So I, the kind of rice I eat, I eat the basmati rice. And I remember when I started buying the basmati rice, it was about 3000 naira. I kid you not. Basmati rice right now, the one I buy is almost 30 something thousand naira. Mm. It's ridiculous. And we're talking about 10 kg. So 3,000 naira is like 1,000 November, As of November, I bought it 38,000 naira in Lagos Island, not even in a supermarket. So I'm buying it from, you know, the people who supply to the supermarket. So imagine how much it would be. I went to a supermarket just to check out the price. One of the popular supermarkets here was 50,000 naira for 10 kg. Which was 3,000. Which was about, yes, that, that raised like, well, many years ago. But at least... When you're talking many years, it could be like three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's not so many years ago. When people go out to the UK, tell, I tell you, a lot of things that were a certain price are still that price till today. Mm. They, they were, those things were the, the same price I know for like 10 years inflation happens ago. everywhere. It does. But the jump This is, is not inflation. We have it. to look for another name for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, if this is jumpflation. <laughs> I don't know the name we're going to use. Because it, it defies reasoning that mm. the country that should be able to produce so much is the one lacking so much. It's, it's terrible. Mm. And then nothing... The government will say everything is being done because the other day the presidency was was um, replying one of the former candidates of a political party that things are moving well. They are not as bad as he's mm. putting it. 
That's not what the people are seeing. This is, this is beyond politicking. This is beyond opposition parties and all that. Something needs to be done. Yeah. I don't want to have to run away from this country. Where will I go to? This is my home. This is my home. I don't want to be anywhere else. I would rather be here. So, ah, well, let's move over to our, our final story. Nigerian Immigration Service repatriates 18 irregular Cameroonian migrants from Benue. The Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, has said it has sent back home 18 Cameroonian irregular immigrants residing in Makodi. The state controller, Jerry Omezi, while addressing journalists in Makodi on Monday, said the command got intelligence report that the residents in Makodi, precisely number 22, Jonah Jan Crescent Ima, was housing irregular immigrants. The place was identified by immigration officers who were detailed to carry out surveillance, and they identified 18 Cameroonians who had no travel documents. Upon questioning them, it was discovered that they ha were here um, operating a foreign-based online marketing company known as QNET. Further investigation revealed that the business was in healthcare products, jewelries, and cosmetics. The head of the online marketing business, Anye Emmanuel Aberafo, who also had no travel documents, said they invested about 900,000 naira in the business, Omezi explained. The controller described the arrested persons were economic immigrants who had no valid travel documents, hence NIS would not let them stay in Nigeria. He advised them to go back and follow the due process of immigration while assuring them of a decent manner of taking them back to their country. Omezi further added that the vehicles were already on ground to take them to the border to be handed over to the border controller for repatriation. He, however, said that a lady among the group had applied for a refugee status because of the crisis in Cameroon, which the new and high commissioner for refugees is processing. All right. Yeah. Just get your travel documents. I don't think there should be any reason for you to go to a country without the necessary travel documents. And this brings me to this story. There was this man that went to the airport with no travel documents. And he said because his his spirit told him that the land or rather the earth is for him and he's supposed to take possession and so the spirit told him that he should go just have he's a passport a nigerian, right? he's a nigerian he, he happened like nigerian. like last year spirits talk to us so, much. <laughs> so you went you went to the airport with no travel documents he had a passport that was just it but there was no visa I'm not sure he, if he bought a flight ticket or maybe even bought a flight ticket without a visa, something ridiculous like that. And he went there and was expected to travel. And he said, you know, um, the land is for my father. Yes, God created everywhere. So I should be able to travel to any part of the world that I want to. I'm terrible. I'm just <laughs> cool. I don't have to be clear or not. <laughs> I see. I see. But you see, well... NIS, I mean, that's just to make light of the story, mm -hmm. but yes. Well, NIS... Um, well, sometimes I, I cannot blame them. Our borders are so porous. I don't know if it is their duty to make the borders less porous or it's the government that needs to put something in place. I remember that in America, Donald Trump was even threatening to build a wall. Yes. You know? So it's something that the government has to be proactive uh, about. There are so many Cameroonians, there are so many people from Benin. Even Benin in, was, in, yeah. In, in, in Nigeria that... That to police as well. Uh, travel documents. So the, the borders are too porous. Do you know if how you many go, people from Niger? Up north. Yeah. This, that is the same. Until even in, into Lagos here, there are some people that you speak Hausa to them, they don't understand. You speak languages up north, they don't understand. And they tell you uh, that they are Nigerians. And mm -hmm. They don't have any travel documents. Mm -hmm. They are the people who are our gate men. They are the people who mm -hmm. are our mm -hmm. uh, bokies that move around and all mm -hmm. that. And so today, they're telling us that people had to alert them because border control, border mm -hmm. patrol is not How there. did they even get into the country? And that's why we've been calling for, uh, for this synergy between all the security agencies that we have and for them to provide drones and everything that needs to monitor the borders. Mm -hmm. The borders are porous. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Okay, but when they come in now... And they're doing is the, business. Yeah, oh, they're making money. They're making money. The business. When they come in now, is the onus on us to, um, you know, ask them, for instance, if you're employing somebody, are you supposed to ask them, where are you from? Um, you know, do that form of, we like call it identification process. And then if they're not from Nigeria, you ask them if they have, you know, the necessary travel documents. So because, fine, we already established the fact that the borders are porous. Um, if these people come in, 
because you, like you said, there are gate men, house elves, nanny and, and, and all of that. Do we start to ask them, is that a way of helping the government? What, what, what if they tell you they're from Nigeria? What is it that you're going to use to verify? I, as a Nigerian, what do I carry so around? What, I'm so what do I carry around to show that I'm in Nigeria? No, no, no. So, for instance, if you're if you're in Nigeria, mm. and I want to, you know, do some form of identification verification process, I'm asking you, where's your family from? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You need to have like a guarantor that's like a family member. Where do they live? You know, questions like that. And I have to see the. Um, you're not going to bring another sec another gate man. Because I would know that there's something fishy. Do you understand once, my point? Once someone enters Nigeria, there's someone he followed or there's someone who told him about something. So maybe like one big yeah, ogre. Like, like they come to Lagos now. People come from the north to Lagos. You see them in lorries every day. There must be someone who told him that there's a place, one bachelor that you can stay when you're coming here. <clears throat> that person already knows some people around that vicinity. So if they want to call, they will call that person and it will be like, oh, we are from here. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, is there something we can do to actually help the government? The government should give us some kind of identification. It started with the time of Obasanjo. There was this national identification that he did. So everybody was supposed to have some form of passport so that they will identify you because this enumeration was done within the villages. So everybody knows everybody else. And then we, got, we, we had all those things. Now, nobody uses those things anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where mine is, where that passport is. So, I'm never sure if I have. So, a Nigerian, <laughs> a Beninoa, or any, somebody from a Cameroonian or mm -hmm. all that can enter into Nigeria and he's as empty as I am. Mm -hmm. So, how do so I how identify? Do you, yeah, yeah. So, some of these people, like from Cameroon, people who are from Cameroon, they speak Boki language, which is a border mm -hmm. town. Some of these people intermarry. So they know people mm -hmm. that are coming from other places like that. And so but, they kind of just blend in, sort of. Yes. So even the, my people migrated from somewhere in Cameroon. Mm. So th the first time I visited Cameroon, I went to that village. And they were speaking my language. Interesting. So if, if you want to catch them and say, okay, you say you're from Anyways, here, speak the control. language. <laughs> we cannot, control, we please, speak it. Instead of us thinking so of how to Give us identity job. so that you can find out who doesn't have our identity and then make sure the border control, yeah. border patrol help us. is top notch. Help us help you. <laughs> All right, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at what the National Dailies are saying this morning. Stay with us.